in this presentation, I'm going to talk about a few different topics. I'm going to weave my way through um, from my original um, title, uh, Rezoning a New Urban Skin. I'm going to talk a little bit about revitalizing urban industrial landscapes and how those require engineered soils or aggregates and then where those soils and aggregates come from. Um, so looking at regional quarries of, and landscapes of extraction, and then finishing off with a, an example of a repurposed quarry, um, looking at how can we restore um, regional voids that we create with our extraction. So my interest is in the accumulation of history that creates urban soils, the provenance of the materials that compose them and the movement of materials around the earth that is creating our anthropogenic skin. I live in Brooklyn, a borough that is undergoing a lot of rezoning right now. Um, rezoning is a complex city process that determines new land uses on property. And this is happening in the Gowanus Canal neighborhood, which is close to me currently zoned for manufacturing, as you see in the center here. And it's surrounded by, um, an air, by residentially zoned neighborhoods. So there's always a need for new housing and more development in urban areas and especially affordable housing. Um, the industrial legacy of the Gowanus Canal has left a big footprint of degraded and polluted soils. Um, in the Guanas. And today the neighborhood is a busy hub of manufacturing, office buildings, and has a vibrant creative arts community. The area is subject to flooding, and this will become more and more frequent as the climate changes. So the canal is also undergoing a Superfund cleanup, and the area is anticipating rezoning to happen in 2021. So, oops, the soils have taken uh, a major industrial hit during the last century. And most sites along the canal shoreline require remediation and capping with clean soils. And SCAPE, the landscape architecture firm where I work, and the Gowanus Canal Conservancy together have produced a master plan for future development. Um, to create a vibrant and resilient system of green infrastructure, parks, and greenways that can serve as a catalyst for economic vitality. The fact also is that with this um, rezoning and redevelopment, hundreds of cubic yards of engineered soils will be brought into this area as the development happens. So what are engineered soils made of? Um, the type of engineered soils on the projects that I design and specify are um, based from mi uh, mineral aggregate, most notably sand, mixed with loam, some organic content such as compost and um, the biological agents to keep it alive. So sand, where is this material uh, where, is all the, where are all these minerals coming from? It's a, sand is a very low cost element that is very heavy. So the most ep efficient place to quarry it is within 50 miles of its place of use. The farther it's transported, the more it costs, which is why in, um, you know, in ancient cities with historic centers, you often see a quarry that is in the center of a, of a contemporary city because of the time the um, quarry was created, it was outside of the historic boundary. So New York State is pockmarked with sand and gravel mines. We need to um, ha have access to sand and, um, and stone as close as possible to the places that we construct. New Jersey similarly um, is uh, full of sand pits, quarries, and borrow areas. Um, and borrow is a term that, uh, a trade term that I find very interesting. It refers to material taken from one location or a pit and used in another location without the intention to return it. 
it's often pronounced as a barrow pit, which must be where the term wheelbarrow comes from. So I find it very interesting how it contrasts with the more standard definition um, that is to use and return something. Aggregate is the world's second most heavily exploited resource after water. And the 2014 UN Environment Program concluded that the mining of sand and gravel greatly exceeds natural renewal rates. That's because it's also used as a component of concrete. However, our urban post-industrial sites are now becoming very valuable for the new housing and development we need for open spaces and parks. So as cities grow, we need that new urban skin that contains sand. Unfortunately, a new urban skin in a, in a post-industrial um, urban area creates a post-industrial void somewhere in the regional hinterlands. Quarries are only considered useful while in production and they become degraded industrial sites after they close and they all do eventually close. In 1990, New Jersey had 900 active and abandoned quarries in the state. So how does this happen? Well, mining companies are not in the business of land use planning. They are in the business of extraction for money and they supply a demand. How can we preempt the eventual closing and abandonment of mines and quarries before they close? Can we create new opportunities for communities that live in quarries, that live in close proximity to closed mines and quarries? What we need are reciprocal solutions for revitalizing not only urban landscapes, but remediating the quarries, creating new jobs and opportunities in the area for the community around those quarries. What does repurposing a sand quarry mean? Well, trying to restore it to its original state is like fixing a broken egg, and it does not address the needs of the surrounding community. So a repurposed sand quarry could be a new recreation area, or it could also be a renewable energy generation site. And how can these sorts of things be funded with a land trust, which is um, a, a, a fund with contributions that are um, contributed over the lifetime of the quarry to pay for the future repurposing of the quarry. So planning for closure creates a new regional asset, community buy-in and jobs. An example of a quarry repurposing project for the city of Beersheba, Israel is one by Scape Landscape Architecture um, that creates a community asset out of a void that was in the middle of the city. So Beersheba Quarry was an Ottoman limestone quarry that was located outside the historic city boundary. You can see it's the red um, dot in the middle of the city map there. Um, and it, now it, the city's grown, so it's surrounded by the city. And um, as you can see in the photos, it's sort of a, a big abandoned space. Um, Skate proposed a new cultural center and park identity for the Beersheba Quarry that would create a new gateway to the surrounding neighborhoods by showcasing landscape and geology. Microparks are created at the upper neighborhood entrances to the park and a connective civet promenade winds through the park. Shade from the deep cuts in the quarry center create opportunity to create an oasis and pools, which are very important in the desert. Stone plays a role in making the quarry an interactive center, so it's more than just a static view of history. 
reactivating the craft of working with limestone will help keep artisan traditions alive. Local limestone can be used for signature landmarks and elements around the city, making artisan handcraft a part of this new park and cultural center. An adaptive vegetation is planted to recolonize the quarry and emphasize the different microclimates created by the topography and to stabilize the soils. This is a section view of the quarry trail through the deep cut of the quarry, again, um, showcasing the sort of um, very, very intense topography um, that's left behind in quarries, which can actually be quite beautiful. And this is a section view of the pool, water being an essential element for parks in a hot desert climate. So the takeaway from all of this, I know I've taken you through um, a, a couple, quite a few different topics here, but is that the supply chain of engineered soils is more than a quarry and a compost facility. It really should be a circular chain of industries that include land use planning, mining, construction and production, landscape architecture, and mine site rehabil rehabilitation and repurposing. Thank you so much for the opportunity to present this. I really appreciate it.